This is part three in phylogenetic reconstruction. Uh, we're going to talk about how we do reconstruction using morphological features. All right, so here's a reminder. This is the uh, entire path that we're going to follow to reconstruct using morphological characters. And we'll start over here with the observed character states. So basically, this is the data that we're going to collect in order to be able to do our phylogenetic reconstruction. So the first thing we have to do is choose and measure our characters. Um, what are good morphological features? Well, as we suggested before, what we want are complex characters that are unlikely to have evolved twice. Um, the other thing that we didn't talk about before, though, is we want characters that are heritable. We don't want characters that are going to be a feature of an organism that are not going to be inherited. So, for example, if I separated out a group of people uh, based entirely on, say, skin color, that might seem like a, a reasonable thing to do, but it isn't because people's skin color actually changes depending on how much sunlight uh, they've been exposed to. That's not a, the fact that somebody is darker after they've been out in the sun for a while doesn't mean that they will be, remain darker than somebody else for the same period of time. All right, so this is just an example of some heritable characters. On plants, we might measure various features about uh, the flowers, so say number of petals, length of petals, for example. Uh, for animals, we could pick a bunch of different types of features. Uh, on insects that have wings, we might do something with their venation of their wings, or we might look at the uh, structure and shape of their antennae. All of these things would be considered uh, good characters to work with for uh, morphological reconstruction. All right, now once we've gathered all of our characters together, what we want to do is make sure that we're working with homologies, because as you'll remember, only homologies are useful to us in trying to do reconstruction. Uh, we don't want to work with things that are analogies. So how are we going to distinguish homologies from analogies? Um, you have to be careful, because convergent evolution can be really deceptive. It's amazing how similar things can look to one another uh, just due to convergent evolution. And so it's better in this case to use characters that are non-adaptive or less strongly under natural selection. Because where natural selection acts really strongly, you would expect convergent evolution to be a bigger problem. And here's an interesting example. Uh, over on the right, you see a praying mantis. On the left, that smaller organism that looks an awful lot like a praying mantis is actually a species of fly that has been selected under similar circumstances, uh, and it ends up looking an awful lot like a praying mantis, even though it's not. All right, so there's three general principles that we apply to try to decide whether or not characters we're working with are homologies or not. The first one is that homologies will show the same fundamental underlying structure, okay? And so if we look carefully at the underlying structure of a feature, we should be able to tell whether or not it's a homology. The classic example of this is looking at vertebrate limbs. If you just looked at vertebrate, vertebrate limbs on the surface, they're very different. Some are used for flight, some are used for locomotion. In the case of humans, for forelimbs, they're used for grasping. But if you look underneath and look at the bones, they're all made out of the same set of bones. And so that is telling us that they're very likely to share a common ancestor and to be homologous with one another as limbs. The second way that we can determine whether or not features are homologies is by looking at whether or not those uh, structures, the underlying structures, also have the same relationships to one another. So if we look at the bones in forelimbs, we see that they all appear over and over in exactly the same relationship to one another. And that is illustrated here by looking at salamander, crocodiles, humans, birds, bats, and horses. And the dots indicate that the bones, the same sets of bones, appear in the exact same ordering in all of these different species. And finally, the other way we can decide whether or not things are homologies is by looking if they have the same overall embryonic development. Similar adult characters that develop by different steps or different processes are not as likely to be homologous as ones that develop by the same steps. And here's an example. Lots of organisms have eyes, 
Um, and it turns out eyes have evolved more than once. They've evolved several times. And one of the ways we can tell this is because during development, they develop different ways in different groups. On the left, we see the steps that are gone through to get a cephalopod eye. So this would be for things like squids and octopus. Um, and then over here on the right, we have the vertebrates. And you can see that the way that the vertebrate eye is, uh, develops is very different from the way that the cephalopod eye develops. And so there's a really good chance, because of these different developmental processes, that these different types of eyes are not the same. They're not homologous with each other. Okay, another way we can do this that in a more positive vein is like with the horse. If you looked at a horse and a bat, you might think these don't look very similar to each other. But if you look at the development of the horse, you can see that initially there are toes in the early development, additional toes in the early development of the horse, and then they get lost as the development proceeds. But because we can see those toes in the earlier stages of development here, and they are very similar to the digits that we see over here, for example, in this bat wing, then there's a really high probability that the horse's toes and the bat's fingers are going to be homologous with one another.